kids that are coming on Wednesday and their families, and you're going to make a bunch of cookies for that, and we're going to deliver them. Nod. Sounds right. great. What? I have to taste each and every batch. No, I don't have your address. But you're making how much cookies? <laughs> um, Psalms Journey Quartet, Saturday, March 26th. I know this is several months out, but just so that you're prepared for that. This will also be back there in the foyer that you can read it. Anything else? Anybody? Do we have a video? Okay, I will pray and we'll watch a video. No. No video. I will pray and then we'll listen to chat, right? <laughs> All right. Dearly, Father, I come to you today, Lord. I am so thankful for yet another day in your house, Lord. I just ask right now that you move among us today, Lord. I know you're in our midst. I just ask for anointment on the praise team, Lord. I just ask that you move through them, that you work through them, Lord. I ask right now that you work through Brother Danny, Lord. I just pray that you give him the words that you would have him say, Lord. It's my prayer that someone will hear those words and come to know you from that, Lord. I just thank you so much for what you do to this church. I pray that you continue to bless it, Lord. I do lift up Wava's family, Lord, and Charles Hill's family, Lord. And I just ask right now that you give them comfort. You give them a peace, Lord, and an understanding. I just pray that you use this opportunity that they draw closer to you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I love this church. It's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. All right, it's good to be in the house of the Lord today. Let's stand together to worship Him. God is good all the time. Amen. Amen. He's our rescuer. He's our rescuer. We are free from sin forevermore. Oh, how sweet the sound. Oh, how grace abounds. We will praise the Lord. There is good news for the captive, good news for the shamed, there is good news for the one who walked away, there is good news for the doubter, the one religion failed, for the good Lord has come to seek and to save. He's our rescuer, he's our rescuer, 
from sin forevermore. Oh, how sweet the sound, oh, how grace abounds. We will praise the Lord, our rescuer. We will praise the Lord, our rescuer. Amen. Aren't you glad to have a rescuer? Have you been rescued? I thank the Lord Jesus that he's in control of my life. I thank the Lord that his grace remains, that his power is still sufficient in all of our weakness. If I had to make the Christian life on my own, I don't think I could do it. Matter of fact, when I look into the Word of God, I know I cannot do it. But his Holy Spirit dwelling inside of me makes me who I'm supposed to be. Is that right for you? Do you know that's true? God has done everything in Christ Jesus for you and all you have to do is rest back upon that and trust in Him. Jesus is all and in all. Amen. Your love is amazing, steady and unchanging. Your love is a mountain from beneath my feet. Your love is a mystery, how you gently lift me. When I am surrounded, your love carries me. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Your love makes me sing. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Your love makes me sing. Your love is surprising, I can feel it rising, all the joy that's growing deep inside of me. Every time I see you, all your goodness shines through, I can feel this God song rising up in me. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Sing hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Your love makes me sing. Yes, you make me sing. Lord, you make me sing, sing, sing. Yes, you make me sing. makes me sing hallelujah 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 your love makes me sing yes you make me sing how you make me sing 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 yes you make me sing Hallelujah, 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 my love makes me sing, hallelujah, 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 my love makes me sing. as the ocean loving kindness as the flood when the prince of life our ransom shed for us his precious blood who is love will not remember who can cease to sing his praise he can never be forgotten throughout heaven's 
eternal days. On the mount of crucifixion, fountains open deep and wide. Through the flood gates of God's mercy, flowed on vast and gracious time. Grace and love like mighty rivers poured in and from above. Heaven's peace and perfect justice kiss the guilty world in love. Who is love will not remember. Who can cease to sing his praise? He can never be forgotten throughout his eternal days. No love is higher, no love is wider, no love is deeper, no love is truer, no love is higher, no love is wider, no love is like your love, oh Lord. No love is higher, no love is wider, no love is deeper, no love is truer, no love is higher, no love is wider, no love is like your love, oh Lord. Here is love, vast as the ocean. Loving kindness as a flood When the Prince of life our ransom Shed for us His precious blood And who is love will not remember Who can cease to sing His praise he can never be forgotten throughout his eternal days. Let's pray. Father God, we just thank you for another day to be in your house, Father, is where we can spend time with our brothers and sisters who we all love you the same way, Lord. And what a love that we get back from you. We just praise you for that. Father, I do ask you to be with Brother Danny as he brings your word today. Just speak through him, Father. And if there's one here that doesn't know you, I pray that you'll touch hearts and just let them come to know you, Lord. I do ask you blessings upon Kathy this morning as she brings the worship song, Father. Just bless her, and I know we're all going to be blessed through her, Lord. We just ask you now to take this offering that we give today, Father. It's all yours anyway, but just take it and just bless your kingdom with it, Father. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Happy New Year. I've been waiting to say that. You know, usually uh, New Year's is resolutions, and Brother Danny preached about that, and I don't do resolutions anymore. I don't keep them. I am not good, but I do try to commit myself to the Lord every year, and I've fallen short even on that. I've realized in the last couple of years, I just really hadn't done that. So this year, I'm committing myself to the Lord to have a closer walk with Him.
with just me Just closer up Just closer up think if we're ready for that clip we could just go ahead and do it and then I'll introduce you the most repeated question by Jesus during his ministry was this have you never read have you never read underneath that simple question is a life-altering implication you should read the Word of God that's why Jesus also says, man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And Jesus knows that there is a spiritual hunger inside of every human heart that can only be satisfied by consuming the words of God. Christian, give yourself to the word of God. The word of God is a rock, strong and steady, it doesn't budge, break, or crumble under pressure. It's an anchor in the storm, keeping us calm when everything around us is chaotic. The Word of God is a mirror, showing us who we really are. You don't just read the Word of God, it reads you. It's a treasure, beautiful in every dimension and worth every effort of discovery. It brings endless joy and eternal riches to all who find it. It's a fire, spreading across the world to bring heat and light. It's a river, bringing life and power to everything it touches. The Word of God is a seed, planted deep inside of our hearts, producing the fruit of holiness and righteousness. The Word of God is a sword, dividing true and false, right and wrong, good and evil. It's a hammer, crushing what needs to be crushed and breaking what needs to be broken. It's a lamp to our feet and a light to show us our path. So let the voice of God be the first, the last, and the loudest voice in your ear today, tomorrow, and for the rest of your life. Give yourself to the Word of God. All right, thank you. And thank you, Marilee, for working with me to make that happen. Just such a powerful video that we are felt like it would be worth considering because that's what I want us to do in the next few weeks. I want us to consider some things. Uh, last week, we talked about considering the new year. And so this year, I want us to think about considering now and today we're going to talk about the Word of God in every area of our life success depends on fundamentals uh, your car doesn't run right and you can talk to uh, Mr. Tapley back there and he'll say reconsider the basics my dad always said change the oil and it'll run forever and it usually did uh, if it didn't work right get a tune-up uh, Clean your, in today's world, clean your injectors. Look for malfunctioning parts. Get back to the basics. Because it's the basics that make the big issues. In sports, uh, I'm, a, you know, unfortunately a Cowboy fan. And so, uh, one more time, we proved last night that the Cowboys, if they play poor teams all the way through, they'll win the Super Bowl. If they play NFC East teams and teams that aren't any good, they can run up the score like nobody's business. Uh, 
but you know, uh, just a few weeks ago they were talking about Dak being in a slump. And in sports, getting a slump, what do you do? You reconsider the basics. Foot placement, flow of movement, eye awareness, practicing the fundamentals. A fisherman, I guess, I, I don't know enough about fishing to know about the fundamentals of fishing, but it's in the little twitches, in the little whatever's, in the right bait for the right time. It's the big things take care of themselves when you take care of the fundamentals. And so it is with our spiritual life as well. We could desire a great spiritual life and to do great things for God and to be close to Him. How do you do that? You go back to the fundamentals and the basics, evaluating our lives and focusing on the spiritual disciplines that result in a healthy life. And so that's what I want us to do over the next few weeks. We won't be going through a book or a lengthy set of passages. What we'll do instead is be focusing on, prim- and, and in each setting, we'll focus in a primary set of scriptures or scripture. But I want us to talk about fundamentals. And this morning, I want us to talk about considering or reconsidering it. Uh, is it time to change our lives and the way we deal with the Word of God in our lives? And we'll look primarily <coughs> in Second Timothy chapter 3 and Psalms chapter 1. Let's pray. Father, we love you. And Lord, we are excited about new things. What a, a fresh start we can get. And even as Kathy shared, I, I'm not <coughs> so good at resolutions. But Lord, you remind me all the time how important it is to look for excuses to be renewed in my spiritual life. And so Lord, this is a good excuse, a new year, a new time. It's fresh. Help me, Lord, to be renewed and, and may my spiritual life be transformed this year beginning now. And so, Lord, help us this morning to reconsider the fundamentals of what it means and how it, how it happens that we walk with you. And so, Lord, help us this morning to wrestle with the Word of God to make sure that not just in, in, in verb, it, verbally we say we think much about the Word of God, but may it be part of our life, part of our practice of life, the Word of God. And Lord, in the midst of this, Lord, would you Draw people to yourself that somebody here may not know you as Savior. May they recognize what you've revealed to them, and that's that Jesus died for them. And if they'll but just trust you as Savior, Jesus, what he did on the cross for them, will be applied to them. That that his death for their sins will be applied, and they'll be forgiven, and they can come into the family of God. And every Christian, may we be renewed and refreshed. We pray it now in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so let's, cons- let's consider uh, the Word of God in 2022. What is it? 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. All Scripture is breathed out by God and is profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. One primary scripture we'll look at this morning is found right here, and we, could ex- we couldn't exhaust it if we spent weeks and weeks examining the passage. All scripture is breathed out by God. It's words from God. You ever think, well, you know, if God would just... Speak to me about whatever. If, if you just make it that clear, I've got decisions to make, I have things to do. If just God would speak to me so I would know His mind. He has spoke to us. And, and God breathed out the Scriptures. We're not talking about, uh, you know, a, uh, a man's idea of how to be healthy, wealthy, and wise. In spite of some preachers that that, that talk about all of, a bunch of good principles of life that are okay. But this goes beyond that. This is the words, the very words from God. You know, oftentimes people will say, well, it's, 
he offers the instruction manual. And, uh, you know, I hate, instru I, I don't like instruction manuals. Uh, if you can't figure it out on your way, then you ought not to do it, you know. Although yesterday I found out I was installing hangers for my, um, for my kayak. And I had built kind of a table and, and did it in such a way that the weight wouldn't be wrong. And it worked really, really well, and it was outside about yay wide. And I would put my kayak there. The trouble is, the kayak was flat. And when it rains, no matter what you do, tarps or anything, you get water in it. And, all, you know, and it, so it's always full of water breeding mosquitoes. So I thought, okay, we'll solve this problem. I'll, I'll buy, instead of make, a hanger for it, you know, with a hook thingy and you put it in there. So yesterday in the, in the drizzle and the back and forth nastiness, I hung those. I hung it yesterday and I learned something. I, I read the manual, which is usually, you know, one page in 12 languages, right? You know, and I picked uh, ancient Indonesian to look at. No, I didn't do that. I looked at the, you know, the little section about English. How worthless are instructions anymore, aren't they? I mean, everybody, it seems like the manufacturers buy into what I think, which is instructions are for your wife, you know? And so, uh, woo. <laughs> Uh-oh, I shouldn't have said that. Uh, you know, because uh, in our case, it is. Janice wants to read the instructions. We get a new saw. Windows 11 has come, has come out now, and basically... I went, well, I went ahead and installed it on my home PC. It's on the PC at the back. And Windows 11 is the same as Windows 10, except it looks slightly different. And so it makes it hard, because it changed, and it didn't do anything. And Janice always, well, if I had just, if I had instructions that I could read. And in today's world, that just, you know, we just want to fly by the seat of our pants. And the idea is, by trial and error, you'll figure it out. Well, now, we can live in life, and we can figure it out. And when you get as old as Steve, you've figured out a lot of things not to do, haven't you? The hard way. And the truth is, the Word of God would have revealed that to begin with. These are words from God. The only way we know anything is if God would speak, and He has. You know, we can look around and we can explore. And we were, uh, Dave and I were talking about uh, science and evolution and various scenarios uh, this morning. And, and, you know, scientists, you know, they, they just, we just think we know so much. And the truth is, we know so little. And instead, we ought to start with the Word of God because it is from God. The one that made it, the one created it, the one that we can be absolutely sure of, the Word of God. It is God-breathed, and we'll talk more about that here in a little bit. Uh, and it transcends culture. Uh, if we back up uh, a few verses in, in verse 3, 13, it says, he's warning uh, Timothy about the, the age to come that was already happening in Timothy's time. Duh, is even more so now, but he's talking about, you know, people not holding on to doctrine and, and truth, but want to move away. And he says, evil people and imposters will go on from bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived, was happening in Timothy's time. Duh, it's happening in our time. Deceiving and being deceived, evil people, imposters, saying lots of stuff, none of which are reliable. But all Scripture is breathed out by God. The Word of God transcends culture. Now, if you're studying Scripture, I, I, and I believe, you know, it was written, uh, it was written by men under the inspiration of God, and it was one of those amazing things where God used people and their experiences and their knowledge, and yet the end result was the words of God, and the result is it transcends culture. Now, I, as in my study, I'll try to understand culture as much as possible to understand how it was written, where it was written, why it was written. And at the end of the day, it's the Word of God, and it transcends the culture. 
it transcends the beginning culture. It transcends our culture. Let me just say, and I believe in trying to understand what the original setting was to help us understand some of the nuance. Understand the trend today is you so do that that you, you strip the words to where they no longer mean what they say in order to accommodate our culture. But these are the words of God. And sometimes we embrace it and love it. And sometimes we go, boy, I wish it didn't say that. But this is the word of God. Uh, by the way, let me just say, be careful. Lots of problems come when you got people like me that are talking about the word of God. And my understanding of the word of God is going to be flawed. It's the Word of God that's true, not what I say about the Word of God that's true. And again, we'll say more about this as we go along, but we can say, oh, I want to know the Word of God, so I want to read all what these men say about the Word of God. And, and that's okay. But it's not the same as reading the Word of God. It's the Word of God itself that's true. And so there's a whole, I mean, whole movements that at one time were good, turn bad. Uh, whole religious systems go by the wayside when men begin to think in terms of men's thoughts instead of returning to the Word of God and letting the Word of God speak. And, of course, the men that are here on Tuesday night will know that I'm kind of, you know, we've, we've emphasized here, especially recently, sometimes God is God and we aren't. And so we see truths taught, and we have trouble sometimes pulling them together. And it's okay to try to do that, but understand at the end of the day, it's not what we're saying about the Word of God or our theology about the Word of God. It's the Word of God. And if the Word of God says, Whosoever will may come, whosoever will may come. And if God says He's sovereign, He's sovereign. And now... Be careful about pulling those things and changing either of those statements. Because God is sovereign, and you have a choice to make today, and so do I. And I'm accountable for that choice. It transcends culture. It's the truth in what it says. Not what I say about it, but what it says that's critical. It's the authority and foundation for life. As for you, uh, Paul says to Timothy in verse 14, he says, continue in what you have learned and firmly believed, knowing from whom you learned it. It was the foundation, it's been the foundation for your, it was the foundation of great grandma, of grandma. It, it was the foundation of, of your mom. And they taught it to you, and then you embraced it, and you followed me, and I've taught you. This is what you know. Hold to it. It's the foundation and authority for everything in your life. The Word of God. Nothing else. The Word of God is what you need to embrace as the authority and foundation for life. It is alive in itself. And this is different than anything else you read or study. The Word of God is alive. It is breathed out by God, which implies life. It's alive. And and a Hebrews writer says this about it, The Word of God is living, it's active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and spirit, of joints and of marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intents of the heart. The Word of God is alive. I am not a good counselor. You know, I, I, I've counseled people, and I will counsel people. I'll counsel them like a pastor, and I think that's okay. But that, I'm not qualified to do beyond that. Uh, I was trying to counsel a, a couple that had had problems for ever, ever, since they've been, ever since they were married. Just great people, terrible sin in some of their life, part of their lives. And so I was trying to counsel with them, and and, and, and she was, uh, had, was a psychologist, or she had studied, she had a degree in psychology. And, you know, I very quickly, in talking with them, said, you know, I'm not your classic psychological 
counselor. I don't have those training. I don't have those skills. Um, and, and ultimately, I did associate them with somebody and with a different group that did have those skills. But when she went back home and talked to her counselor, he would do th things like, okay, sit in that chair uh, and pretend that chair is your husband. And beat the snot out of it with that pillow and express your anger. I'm not a very good counselor. I, I don't quite grasp all of that. And, 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 you know, and I say that and, and we laugh about it and it probably wasn't all of that simple. And, and maybe expressing yourself, maybe it has some value as long as you take it somewhere. But my take is you need to sacrifice yourself on account of your spouse before Christ. See, see your spouse as ministry. Give up your desires if necessary on the sake, like, like Jesus loved us. Surrender to ministry as opposed to somehow manipulating them into meeting my needs. Now, I, 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 you know, I, I, and I want to be careful because I, I do respect, and, and there's some good things that can come out of those scenarios, but the truth is the Word of God will penetrate our lives. And it's the Word of God itself that has ultimate authority and the ultimate ability to change. You know, pretty, pretty commonly, I, you know, mostly as a pastor I listen, and you know, there's a lot, there's a lot of stuff goes on, a lot of evil in the world, a lot of brokenness, a lot of sadness, a lot of things, and, and I can listen. And I could give Pat answers that aren't going to do any good to anybody, although sometimes you have to say them. But one thing I almost always do, especially when people are dealing with depression and, and they can't grapple with it, is ingest the Word of God. You know, and I think in my own scenario, years ago, back in my, uh, my 20s, late 20s, and there was devastation beyond any, there was just, as a Christian now, it was like there was no hope. The world had ended, and there was no hope. And even when I, when, when God got a hold of me and said, well, you're going to walk with me, you need to walk with me and find hope. And so I did that by faith, and it still hurt, and it was still dark. And I just read the Psalms, amongst other things. I, I did the fundamental things, fundamental, going back to the basics, and part of that scenario was just, re engulf just reading the Psalms and reading about people that felt like I did and worked through it to praise God. And you know, and I believe, I am convinced that no matter what the scenario, if we go to the Word of God and like in depression, if we, if we engage it, it changes us. It does something more than what's on the page. You know, I can say to you, God loves you. And that may or may not make any difference. But as you read from the Word of God about how He loves you, and you see it in people's lives in the Word of God, it is alive. And it does something. It pierces divides, it, it exposes sin, things that are, are issues, things that need to change. It brings encouragement. It brings life. It is alive in itself, the Word of God, not what it says about the Word of God. You know, I can give you lots of good things for you to consider. And if you do, if you consider them, those are be helpful. But the Word of God is more basic than that. It not only communicates, but it changes the way only He can. It's alive into itself. We can read devotional books. I, I have no problem with devotional books. Devotional books are good. You know, and often a devotional says, you know, uh, 
Hezekiah 6.2. And then it has all this wonderful stuff that probably isn't related at all to Hezekiah 6.2 because Hezekiah 6.2 doesn't even exist. But it might as well exist or not exist because what we need is to read the Scripture and then we can listen to people talk about it. But it's the Scripture itself that changes us. And, you know, we can read all kinds of wonderful good things, and there's lots of good things, and there's lots of good stuff, but it's the Word of God that will change us day by day. So I would encourage you, if you use devotionals, park on the Scripture first. Listen to God first. Then it's okay to listen to what somebody else has to say. And you know what sometimes happens? The Scripture itself says a lot more, sometimes something different than what the person says. Or maybe that person then can reinforce what the Scripture says. It's alive. The Word of God is alive in itself. It penetrates. And so that's what it is. What does it do? And this overlaps a bit, and we won't, uh, we won't spend an unusually large amount of time in some of these places, but it redeems. Uh, going back to the passage I read a while ago, uh, how, again, Paul talking to Timothy, and he says how from childhood you have been acquainted with the sacred writings, and what does he say about it? Which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. The Word of God redeems the source of salvation. Jesus died on the cross. He died on the cross to pay the penalty for sin. So that if we trust Him by faith, we can be saved. We can be redeemed. And that's the message. And the Word of God exposes that. And he, uh, it produces salvation. It makes us wise for salvation. Paul goes on and says this to the Corinthians. He says, when I came to him, talk about when he came to him, he says, the word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. Uh, Romans 10, 17. Faith comes by hearing. Where does faith come by hearing? Hearing comes through the word of God. It's not, you know, in a world where everything is spiritual, you know, back in the, you know, you know, back when Jim grew up, everything was in the mind, right? And you weren't worried about spirit. Now everything is spiritual. I'm spiritual. I've got this feeling. I want to have an experience. <sighs> you know, I, that's not faith. That's some kind of faith, maybe. I don't know. But biblical faith comes from hearing the Word of God, and then choosing to believe what it said. Choosing that God has said who He says He is. Jesus did what He said He did. And if I trust Him like He said, I will be saved and I'll be redeemed and I'll be in the family of God. That's faith. And faith comes from hearing the Word of God. Otherwise, it's just meandering faith. I can, I can believe that I'll turn into a toad. And Laura said, and he did. Oh, no. <laughs> Just looks like one. No. Uh, we do all kinds of crazy stuff, right? If you just believe it enough, it'll work. It'll happen. It'll happen. It'll happen. You can do anything you believe you can do. And the answer is no, you can't. That is not a true statement. I grew up with that. And that's not a true statement. Faith in the wrong thing is going to lead to disappointment. Faith in the Word of God is life. It redeems and it grows and it enables us to walk with Him when we trust in Him. It redeems. I've been waiting for me to do that. It reveals God's will and mind. And, and this is kind of comprehensive, but we're not going to be... We're, uh, the Scripture is comprehensive, but we're not going to go to all the de depths. All Scripture is breathed out by God and is profitable for teaching. If you need to know something that's critically important, the Word of God 
will reveal that. It reveals the will of God. It reveals the mind of God. It is good for any type of teaching, any teaching that isn't directly from the Word of God, I'll say, is subject to change. You know, whether it's psychological, whether it's science, whether it's you name the topic, and it changes over time because our understanding changes over time. And the Word of God doesn't change over time. The Word of God is profitable for every type of teaching. And when it speaks to a topic, that, that's it. That's it. It tells us everything there. Anything that we can ultimately know for certain is revealed there. Otherwise, we're not going to know it for certain. Anything that we need to know about God is revealed in the Scripture. By the way, we don't understand all about God. It doesn't always give us all the answers. And oftentimes, I, I, I'm left with, boy, I wish you'd have said it differently. I wish... God, you'd have, I wish you'd have told me more about that. I wish you'd have filled in a few more details. I wish you hadn't have said that. Uh, but that the truth is, it's there and it's for teaching and we need to grapple with it itself. It reveals all about Him. How do we know who this God is? Not through some transcendental experience, but because of what God says. And the only, even in the Christian life, and, and it's a li- He's a living God, and it's a living Word, and, and He does speak to us, and, and we get, you know, how can you, you not be moved when you're in the family of God, when you know the living God? How can you not be, be moved? How, how can you it not affect your uh, emotional experience as well? But understand, all of the emotional pieces of it are subject to being wrong, to being confused, to going and taking us down a path that we don't need to go. The thing we absolutely are certain about is the Word of God. It's profitable for teaching. All kinds of teaching. Everything that we need. And beware if we you exposed to people that teach and preach. Well, I know this is so because I feel, I feel this is so. Here's my experience. Um, If it doesn't say it in the Bible, if the Scriptures doesn't address the topic, be aware that it's subject to being wrong. And if it says something against what the Bible says, guaranteed it's wrong. We need to embrace the Word of God because it's profitable for teaching. It causes conviction. It's profitable for reproof. If we read the Word of God, and we're listening to the Word of God, it'll point out the problem that we have. It'll cause conviction. Um, not against reasoning, you know. And and you know, and at times we do reason. You know, when you're talking to somebody about salvation, you, I'm not I'm not afraid to reason it. I, you know, it's okay. But it's the Word of God that convicts at the end of the day. And if we substitute all our reasoning and apologetics and let me explain how this thing and this thing and this thing, we might get it wrong. And a person, in a general way, is not going to come to Christ because I can outthink them they usually just get frustrated or move to a different place because the Word of God has to convict. And the Word of God does convict. And in whatever we do, I'm saying, if we leave the Word of God out because that's not very politically correct or that doesn't, you know, I'm not being very sophisticated if I use the Word of God, I'm I'm saying I think the Word of God is what does the convicting. It's the Word of God. Paul says, gospel is the power of God that produces salvation. And we can reason with people, and we should, and we can talk to them, and we try to enter where they're at, and all of those things are okay. But it's the Word of God that ultimately convicts 
and draws people and transforms people. It's the Word of God itself. It causes conviction. It enables one to respond. It's for correction. Uh, Not only does it show that it's broken, it shows how to fix it. I'm broken. And the Word of God provides correction. What is it now? What is it I need to do? It's like, uh, it's like the people that Peter was talking to at Pentecost, and he preached the Word. And I'm not at all. I'm not at all saying we ought to be rude or offensive to people when we talk. Peter was. (laughs) He got up and preached and he said, this Messiah that I'm talking about, you murdered him. It's a little more straightforward than typically I would preach. And they said, oh no, what do we do now? And he proceeded to continue with the Word of God to say, trust Christ. The Word of God convicts, and it also then brings healing. It shows what needs to be done. It enables us to move forward as we embrace it. And it's able to equip. Uh, It's profitable for training in righteousness that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. I believe in education. This is one of the few times in my life, in the last maybe seven years, I'm not going to school. And this is not a precursor. <laughs> Jan said, no, please don't go back to school. <laughs> Almost all my life, I've been, been being educated. And even when it wasn't formally in school, it was like at, at work, where they taught management skills and leadership skills. And all of that stuff is really good, and it's really valuable. And at the end of the day, the Word of God is sufficient to equip for every good work. Because, by the way, if any of that stuff is valid, the, you know, the Bible's teaching it too. And so, it's good to grow. It's good. I, I think education's great. And all of that stuff, and I've modeled that, and I still believe in that. But it's the Word of God itself that trains for righteousness, that makes us complete, that equips us for anything you need to do for Him. The Word of God is sufficient. What does it do? It transforms. And we talked about this earlier. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God good, acceptable, and perfect, renewing the mind, filling the mind with Scripture, with, with truth of what God has said, enables one to grow, to discern, and to live good and an acceptable way before God. Psalm 119.11 puts it this way. It's in the context of a young man getting his life straightened out, but here's the, the, the passage is true for every situation. I've stored up your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. It's here. By the way, if you, if you have a problem with sin, nobody, no, no, you don't have to be afraid. We all have a problem with sin. Whatever that area is, go somewhere, maybe a concordance, with, you know, talks about that it lists words and scriptures, or maybe some other resource, find where the Scripture talks about that problem, and then read it, meditate on it, uh, fill your mind with it. If you can't memorize it, write it on a piece of paper and hang it up next to wherever you usually are. Put it in your pocket. The Word of God changes us. Your psychological principle... Whatever you think about is, you know, they, they, you know, it's like stop that, you know, that that uh, evil thinking or you know or, or whatever the term it is that they use, 
And there's at least an element of truth to that, stinking thinking. There's an element of truth to that. Stop doing your stinking thinking and replace it with the truth of the Word of God. And it'll transform us. It transforms. Uh, Isaiah writes and say, uh, and from God, and he says, For as the rain and snow come down from heaven, do not return there, but water the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower, bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and shall succeed in the thing for which I sent it. The Word of God will accomplish what God wants. Why do I put Scripture up here? Because I don't think I'm a very good communicator, for one. And I'm not... Don't want you to depend on what I say. Don't hear what I say. Read what the Bible says. And it'll transform you. And it'll accomplish exactly what God sent it to do. The Word of God. So what should I do? Embrace it. Psalm 1, 1. Blessed is the man, his delight is in the law of the Lord. He delights. He embraces it. He loves it. He makes it a part of his daily life. Uh, Psalm 119, 14. In the way of your testimonies, I delight as much as in all riches. I'd rather have your word than a new car, than a new boat, than a new house, than a new pick a thing. I will meditate on your precepts, fix my eyes on your ways. I will delight in your statues. I will not forget your word. Lead me in the path of your commandments, for I delight in it. You get the word? Get the, get the. This is exciting. The word of God is exciting. And I, I, I need it. I need it. I need it more than anything else. Embrace it. By the way, the implication is you're doing this. Read it. Until I come, devote yourself to the public reading of the Scriptures, to exhortation, to teaching. Paul, again, writing to Timothy, devote yourself to the Scriptures. By the way, people didn't have in their own copies, so you had to publicly read it. And it's good to publicly read it, but the thing is, read it! Read it, Paul says. Uh, common, the Old Testament. Then he read the book of the covenant and read it in the hearing of the people. Forty times there was public readings of the scriptures. Again, people didn't have their own copies. At least some of the times, a quarter of the day, they just read the scriptures. And sometimes they exposited it. The word of God Read it. Ingest it. 2022. I, you know, the question is, have you, have you read through the entire Bible? How much does it mean to you? Do you do it? You know, and there's lots of philosophies of, of devotions and, and reading and stuff. And I've tried many and most of them. I try to do a different version every year and and uh, last year and this year, I'm just doing the New Testament. I have uh, a reading plan for just the New Testament that reads a chapter a day for five days, take two days off, read more five days and two days off, and you read through the entire New Testament. Read it, ingest it. And you know, one of the things that just excites me is the more I read it, the more I understand at a general level. Not just getting lost in a particular scripture, but what's the Bible saying? And we can sometimes come across a difficult place and get sidelined or do something strange or believe something strange. But if you read the whole scriptures and you're constantly doing it, it's like, no, wait. It can't be this because I know too much of where else God has said this. Read it. And let it transform. Let it do all the things we're talking about. Meditate on it. We mentioned this. Blessed is the man. His delight is in the law of the Lord. On his law, he meditates day and night. Fill our mind with Scripture like we fill our minds with Fox News. 
Facebook. If anybody watches CNN. All that other stuff just stirs us up. Even the stuff that we agree with stirs us up. I can't, I can just, sometimes I just can't really stand it. Just reading captions as I, you know, look through Fox News. It's like, oh man, I'm just stirred up. And we ingest that. But are we ingesting the Word of God? How would I compare my time in the Word of God to every, any, anything else I do? Pretty small, most of the time. Delight, meditate, memorize, carry it with us, respond to it by faith and obedience. Jo- Joshua 1.8 The book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night with a purpose, so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. Then you'll make your way prosperous. Then you'll have good success. Not meditating because it's just fun and good to read and makes me feel good, but so that I can then live it out as a Christ-like manner. Respond to it by faith and obedience and enjoy its blessing. And it is a blessing. Blessed is the man. He's like a a tree planted by streams of water yields its fruit in its season, its leaf does not wither, and all that he does he prospers. And the storms come, and the pandemics come, and the government comes, and real persecution may come, and he prospers. Because he's planted by the streams of water, he is delighting in the Word of God, and it's the basis of his faith, his actions, everything about him. He knows the truth because he's considered the Word of God and embraced it. Fundamentals. Got to start with the Word of God. Challenging. I'm being challenged this year. The way I'm doing my own stuff this year is I end up three times reading a chapter, you know, that, you know, the read through the Bible. I'm doing it three different manners so that I do it three times, a chapter three times in the day. At least that's my plan. And I want to be fresh, make it fresh, allow it to be fresh, but most of all, just engage in it, and it'll do the rest because it's alive, it's from God, and He wants to transform our lives in a chaotic messed up world that is full of lies everywhere you look. No one's telling the truth. No one's got the right attitude. But the Word of God sets it all straight. And we can be encouraged and live for Him. Father, we invite you now to speak to our hearts. And Lord, we've most of what we've said really applies to Christians, but Lord, if somebody here doesn't know you as Savior, may they realize this morning that they need you, that you've revealed that Jesus died for them and they need you for forgiveness of sin and to enter into the kingdom of God. They may make that decision this morning and that, Lord, all of us Christians, we might be challenged to reconsider what role the Word of God plays in our life. And, Lord, help us to be disciplined and and embrace it and, and feed upon it and allow it to have a preeminent role in our lives. Work in our hearts. Help us to make decisions today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Would you stand, please? We are not promised tomorrow. We only have today. Each heartbeat is a gift from you, Jesus, and that is why I must say, have your way, have your way, have your way in my heart. Fill me up, fill me up. Fill me up with your love. We are not promised tomorrow. We only 
have today. Each heartbeat is a gift from you, Jesus, and that is why I must say, have your way, have your way, have your way in my heart. Fill me up, fill me up, fill me up with your love. I don't know when I'll finally see you face to face, but until I keep living by your amazing grace, lead me by your spirit each day I live. Without you, I have nothing I could ever give. Have your way, have your way, have your way in my heart. Fill me up, fill me up, fill me up with your love. Have your way, have your way, Jesus, have your way in my heart. Fill me up, fill me up, fill me up with your love. We are not promised tomorrow. Thank you all for being here this morning. And uh, Steve, would you close us in prayer this morning? Don't forget, man, we got all our activity starts this week. Man, Wednesday's going to be a crazy day again. Be praying for us. Heavenly Father, we come to you this, this time, and we just want to thank you. We thank you and praise you for this time that we have to come and worship. We thank you for your word. Lord, let us continue to to read your word and to digest it and to meditate and Lord just to fill our life up with your word Father we pray that uh, you'd go with us the rest of this day bless us we want to thank you for the sunshine we thank you for your love Father thank you most for forgiveness and salvation and Father we pray that you just bring us back that we can love you again. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.